This video is going to attempt to put our world of statistics in context, really in the context of like, what is statistics doing for us? So we'll start out with a goal with pretty much the goal of statistics. And then we'll talk about how we have framed statistics towards that goal. So our goal of statistics. Hang on. There we go. Slight. Go of statistics. Understand. processes where the outcomes are uncertain. And maybe we should say understand better. So really, we have things like random, we have processes in the world, like um, flipping coins, rolling die, um, measuring adult heights, where the process is the person was born, they grew up to be an adult, and then their height until we measure it is an unknown outcome. We want to understand what goes into those processes, like what sort of inputs to those processes are the primary determining factors that determine you know, what value you're going to see on a coin flip or a die roll, or what values are going to show up for adult heights. Like, is it all genetics? Is it all diet in early childhood? Or is it some combination thereof? So our general goal of statistics is to understand better processes where the outcomes are uncertain. Now, we've looked at a few examples of this so far. Some of the more prominent examples in my mind have been like, um, comparing two, sequ two individual sequences of DNA and seeing at how many different locations the base pairs will match. And we had used a binomial distribution for that. Or we had talked about um, the average, we had talked about the time between consecutive rain events at an airport in. I think it was like Winnipeg or something in Canada. I don't exactly remember. And we used a gamma distribution for that. So that's going to lead us into two sides of statistics. There is a distribution side. So this is kind of where we have spent most of our time. This is where we talk about um, distributions and the different patterns that distributions follow, namely specified by density functions, and how those density functions kind of uh, map to specific patterns of processes. Like if you have random numbers that can only take on positive values, then maybe you're looking at a gamma distribution. If you have numbers that show up randomly and can only take on some finite number of elements, maybe you have a binomial distribution. If each of the um, underlying processes is some kind of Bernoulli, or if you can only take on a finite number of elements, maybe you have some sort of uniform distribution. So over here, we have gamma, uniform, with an M, and binomial distributions. Over here, we have a world of data. And I specifically draw this circle smaller so as to say we get data theoretically in the world of statistics. We get data from the distributions. And so we have a bunch of data points that theoretically came from one of these distributions at a time. So here's where we have been a little um, vague so far in this course. Sometimes in this course we have said we specifically have a binomial distribution with k equals to 10 
and P equal to 0 0.07 or something like that. I'm thinking back to the um, DNA example for this specific case. Now, the world of statistics actually operates kind of in the gray area between these two sides. At times, we claim to know the distribution that generated data. And in those times, what we really want to do is understand calculations, things like probabilities, and more generally, expectations with respect to these distributions when we claim to know some of these parameters that go into each distribution. When we claim to know these parameters, like the probability that any two locations in a DNA sequence will match, when we claim to know it, we can calculate probabilities directly. And that's what we'll be doing in like labs one through five, you're calculating probabilities directly. The other side of this, so that's all on the distribution side, the other side of this is for when you don't know these population parameters. So this is like, suppose you have Bernoulli data, but don't know P. Okay, so that's one example here. Another example would be like, suppose you have gamma data, that is data that came from a gamma distribution, but don't know the mean. This is the more common world of statistics. So it's really helpful when you do know the population parameters and you can directly calculate probabilities and expectations. And that's where we started in this class because that's kind of the easier place to um, learn about distributions from. But the more common world of statistics actually says, suppose you have data x1 through xn that came from a Bernoulli distribution, or at least you assume it came from a Bernoulli distribution if all the criteria are met, but you don't know the probability that you observe a one. So you have a bunch of ones and zeros, but you don't know the probability that P, that a one might show up in your data. So your goal is to estimate it. Your goal is to use the data to estimate we call them population parameters. And that is these values like P or probabilities in general, or more generally expectations. We want to just use the data to estimate things like the probability that we observe a one from some Bernoulli process, or just use the data from a gamma distribution, just the data alone to estimate the mean of the gamma distribution. So this is where I'm going to start showing us more and more examples of where we have data, but we don't know these population parameters like P or the mean of the distribution that describes the distribution from which the data came. All we assume is that we have some data from a distribution, and we want to use that data to estimate these population parameters. So if we go back just one slide, when I say understand better processes where the outcomes are uncertain, what this really translates to is estimate expectations, because then we understand better the process that generated the data, estimate expectations of some distribution which we assume generated the data in hand. So that's like you have a bunch of data and you assume it came from a gamma distribution, but the question is, based on the data alone,
what is, let's say, the mean of the distribution from which the data came. Okay, so we're going to look at some more uh, videos in the sequence of show me the data that try to um, look at specific cases of this goal of statistics.